Welcome to a, another fun and exciting little flip assignment. This is all about balancing chemical equations. Okay, so first of all, what I'd like you to do is to get a piece of paper. Uh, make sure to take notes. You can stop it at any time. At the end, there will be a problem that you'll need to turn in. Uh, you'll keep the notes. I'll have to see those. Uh, but then you'll turn in the problem. Uh, okay, so before you balance an equation, a couple of things you have to know. If you cannot write the correct uh, symbols right here, for formulas, it's never going to happen. You need to know where metals and nonmetals are on the periodic table. And as a quick little review, conservation of mass. Whatever we start with, we ha whatever mass we start with, we have to end with it as well. Um, beginning steps. Uh, write out the correct formulas, um, the reactants. You can think of this as the ingredients is on the left side of the arrow. This arrow is the yield sign. The products are on the right side of the arrow. So if this were baking bread, you could think of this as like flour, yeast, and salt on the left side. Cooking it in the oven is the arrow, and then the bread would actually be on the right side. Take an atom inventory. Notice over here there's three calciums. Over, I'm sorry, over here there's only one calcium. Over here there's three. Something happened. There are two calciums that just evaporated. This violates the law of conservation of mass. That's telling us right there it's not balanced. So how do we make sure to get the right number and of atoms on both sides? Well, there's a couple of things that, that can help you. First of all, um, and again, this is the best tip I've gotten from anybody, and I got this from Ron Hoekstrasser. Think of the acronym MNHO, MNHO. This means M stands for metals. N is nonmetals, H is hydrogen, O is oxygen. Look at the atoms or the elements and try to balance it in that order. So for instance, the only metal element we have here is calcium. Uh, so we'll start with the calcium. If you notice, I've got three on this side, I have two on this side, I need two more on this side. So how do I get it? Well, the next tip that's going to be helpful is what I call mac and cheese. And, and here's what we mean by that. If you ever buy mac and cheese at the store, it's a box set. You cannot buy a box of mac and cheese, take out the noodles and just buy the cheese, or take out the cheese and just buy the noodles. Well, it's the same thing with these compounds. Whenever you add a calcium, you add all the stuff that goes with it as a compound. So, and here's what, what, what we mean by that. Let's take a look at the equation now. So we just said, hey, look, there's three calciums on this side. There's only one over here. So I need three more calciums. So what I tell students, put a box around all of these. Um, put a box around the uh, compounds. And if you need three calciums, the O's and the H's have to go with it. So here's a calcium phosphate over here. The, so I put, if I take three calciums, I take the OH's with it. So I have to have three of these compounds. The calciums now balance. No more metals. If we go M, M, N, Ho, the next is nonmetals. Well, let's take a look at the nonmetals. Over here, I've got two of, the, of the, the P's. That's phosphorus. Over here, there's only one. I need, I need therefore, if there are two P's over here, I have to have two over here. I have to have two of these compounds to make it balance out. So let's look. Okay, so here we go. There's two P's right here on this side. There's a P and a P over here again. Looking at the stuff in black, I've got two of these compounds, two of these compounds, one over here, three calciums, three calciums, it's good. Now, H, that's the M-N-H-O, next one is the H. Okay, so now we'll do the H's and let's count them all up. Well, over here there's two, four, six, and then six here, that's twelve. On this side, I only have two. I mean, if I consider, if I were to write one of these in black, there'd be only two H's. How many of these H2Os do I need to get 12? I need a total of 6. So if we go down here, there are my 6 H2Os. Um, so again, 6, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. 12 H's on this side, 6, and 6 is 12 on this side. 3 calciums, 3 calciums, 2 phosphorus, 2 phosphorus. Okay. Now, here's why we do it in the order M, N, H, O. If we save the O's for last, lo and behold, guess what? They actually balance themselves. Let's count them now. There's two, 
four, six, and eight. That's 14 O's on this side. If we look over here, that's eight, uh, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. It's now balanced. Now, this would look pretty stupid if we just had all of these compounds or what we call boxes. So what you do is for however many of these compounds we have, you put a big number in front that's the coefficient. And one is always assumed. So here we've got three of these calcium hydroxide. The three would go here. There's two uh, phosphoric acids. There would be a two right there. One of these, we don't have to put a one. And then there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Put a six. So let's take a look. Again, we balance the O's. You count up the boxes. The big numbers in front are the coefficients. We go down, and there is, we, 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 we count all these up, and instead of calling them boxes, we use the coefficients, and there it is. Okay, so those are the notes. You can go back and play as much as you want to figure it out. Now, here's what you're going to need to do. I'm going to give you an equation, write out the formulas and balance it, and here it is. Sodium bicarbonate, which is basically baking soda, or sodium bicarbonate. It decomposes or yields, that's the arrow sign, um, carbon dioxide plus water plus sodium carbonate. Okay, so what I would like you to do is to write out the correct balanced equation and turn it in with this flipped assignment. Thank you very much. And that ends this flipped assignment.